to Real Girls. How are you today? Um, I'm coming back to make this video. If you're new here, my name is T. If you found me on TikTok, hey! Um, make sure you subscribe to my TikTok, to my YouTube. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. All my handles are this, Simply Ambitious. Um, but today in this video, I'm going to be talking about basically how my experience was in dental hygiene school and what it was like, um, all of that. I'm just real relaxed in the house today, so I just want to, you know, get through that with y'all. Um, so grab your drink or your water, whatever you're sipping on, your snack or whatever, so we can go through this together. And as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, feel free to reach out to me in my DM on Instagram, and I'll try my best to get you in contact with someone who can help you if I can't help you um, and yeah okay so basically hygiene school was uh, it was an experience it was a process I've been out of school for five years now and looking back on it I'm like so happy that I did it now but at the time it was a lot on me like I was so stressed out uh, life was just lifing at that time. I felt so stressed out. Um, let me turn these lights down a little bit. I'm like blind. Okay. Um, I just felt like no matter what I did, it wasn't right. I felt like I had all the support that I needed from my professors. But it's just like I said before in the last video, like it's just so much information. You're learning about so many things in such a small period of time, short, short period of time that you have to memorize. You have to know everything to pass the boards. Basically what they're doing in hygiene school is preparing you for the field of hygiene, but they're really preparing you to take boards exams, okay? So if you don't know, um, dental hygienists are a part of the dental team. Um, and what we do is we basically teach you how to take care of your dental hygiene, how to take care of your teeth, your mouth, your overall health through dental, okay? Because we seem to forget that our mouth is connected to the rest of our body and how to manage our dental health. So um, we learn basically about how to combat periodontal disease, how to manage it, which is basically gum disease, which is genetic and caused by bacteria and just an inevitable list of things that sometimes we can't control regardless of brushing and flossing. So um, that is what a dental hygienist is. The dental hygienist is someone that you come to at least every six months in order to brush, floss, teach you how to brush, teach you how to floss and clean your teeth. Um, we take x-rays. We uh, interpret x-rays. We are able to diagnose cavities where we can treat adults, children, special needs, people in wheelchairs, um, disabled. We can treat anyone, any human being on this earth that has, that. you don't even have to have teeth. You can have no teeth. Um, but we, we learn how to make dentures. We learn all about the mouth, all about the teeth, and all about the human body as well. So, um, hygiene school was just overwhelming. It was overwhelming. Um, I first started taking classes in 2014. Uh, those classes were a mix of clinical and then what they call didactic, which is lecture. So when you're sitting in class and actually writing and taking notes and reading the textbook, that is lecture. And then we have our clinical rotations which is clinic. Clinic is where you actually treat patients. That is when you get graded on teaching, that on the professors teaching you what you need to know, which is your hands-on. That's like your lab, okay? So in hygiene school, you have something called comps, okay? Um, comps are your like verbal quizzes that happen during clinic. So your professor will give you questions, list of questions when you're in lecture and in clinic that they can pop out at you at any point in time while you're treating a patient. 
Um, these competencies, which is short for comps, comp competencies, are for them to test you on things that may pop up on the board's exam, okay? And for questions that may come up as you treat a patient. So those quizzes basically are majority of your grade in clinic, okay? Besides you showing up, you get graded on all these things. You get graded on showing up. You get graded on your uniform, which is making sure you have your scrubs, your socks, your correct scrub shoes. You make sure your hair is tied back, your hair is covered, um, all of those things. And you get graded on your comps and your performance in clinic. So you're trying to combine your knowledge that you get from lecture and combine your, your knowledge from clinic in one. And sometimes it's hard to do both because... You have a different type of professor in one class than you do in clinic sometimes. And then you have information that you're learning that's on a different level or at a different point than you have in clinic. And you're trying to combine the two. So it's like reading a book and then trying to put the visual with it. It's like, it's hard if you're not a visual learner or if you're more of like a, a audio type of learner. It's going to be hard. So... Um, clinic was from 8 to 4 p.m. And basically what we would do is in the morning we would uh, set up for clinic and it would just be like setting up for a dental experience that you would have in a regular dental office. But in, cl in clinic, you don't treat patients in 30, 40 minutes like you do in a regular dental office. You are seeing one to about five patients a semester. And they're grading you on each patient. So you have John Doe. That's your first patient. And they have something important about them. Like he is mentally disabled. Then you have Sarah. Sarah is a pregnant patient. Like, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And you're underneath the license of the other hygienists that are there who are your professors who are teaching you. And then you have one to two dentists who oversee the whole program, who are there to, you know, help you administer local anesthesia, who help you understand everything. So with clinic, the first semester, we learned how to do wiping. All about sterilization, okay? The first semester, I'm sorry, I keep spitting. I haven't been lining. Um, the first semester is all about sterilization. You're practicing on each other, which is your your uh, classmates. And my school, it was about, I believe, maybe 50 students in my cohort, which means the group of students that are in your class at that time. Um, and in clinic, we were broken into groups. So about 20 of those were in the morning and, at, and 20 of those were in the afternoon or on separate days, I can't remember. But I had a group that I stayed with the whole time I was in school. And we traveled as a cohort. So I would have those six students that were in my clinic group. And each semester, we went to, this, to the same thing together. Okay? Um, yeah, so the first semester is just sterilization. You're learning about the wiping procedure. Um, you wipe twice. In hygiene school, you do not wipe once, you wipe twice. So you have to wipe everything, okay? Every single thing. I'm not playing, I'm not joking. Like, every single thing. You wipe every single thing. And you get graded on how well you wiped. I'm going to say it again. Your first semester is all about sterilization, disinfection, and infection control. OK, that's all about trying to take care of the fact that we're going to be in a standard universal environment where there's so many diseases, so many illnesses that are floating around, bacteria, viruses. You're learning about all of that. So they are showing you how to disinfect and sterilize the instruments, sterilize everything. OK, and you are being graded on your wipe. That's what you're doing the first semester. Yeah, and in clinic, with clinic, clinic labs 
are called journals, okay? I don't know what other schools call it, but I think that it's called journals everywhere, okay? Um, journals are basically you reflecting on your time in clinic that day or week, and you have to turn it into the professor, and they're going to read it. Um, you have something called journal questions. Journal questions are the questions that the professor or the clinic professor gives you that they want you to answer these questions. So it might be something that popped out to you while you were in clinic. Excuse me. Um, one of the, the patients you had might be like, oh, um, how come you're taking my blood pressure? I've never taken blood pressure before. And you can say, well, your blood pressure is important for us to know um, how your health is being regulated and to make sure that we're treating you at the best standard of care. That's a good answer. Instead of you saying, I don't know, you know, we in school, so we got to do it like this. That's not really a good answer. That's not professional. So if your professor, your professor may not say anything at that time in clinic when you have that answer. Let's say you answered the second answer, but they'll go back and write it in your journal questions personally and be like, what is the correct answer to a patient asking you about high blood pressure or how to take blood pressure why is it important to take blood pressure because they want you to think everything is about thinking everything is about getting in your head everything is about case studies okay every patient that you come across even if they are normal healthy patient is a case study because on the boards when you take the boards you are getting graded on tested on like case studies like a patient, patient A, patient B. Um, so, and I mean, it goes and it applies to everyday life if you think about it. Every patient you meet every single day as you're treating a patient every day in private practice, in corporate or whatever, as a clinic clinician, you are treating a patient with a slew of medications and conditions that you have to create the best standard of care for them. Um, so... It's a lot. It's really a lot. It's really a lot. Um, and it makes you almost feel impatient because you're like, am I really sitting here wipe wiping? Like, are we? is there really a procedure on wiping? Is that, Are they really serious? Are they dead ass right now? And it's like, yeah, we are. And you have to write out the sequence to wipe wipe. My sequence to wipe wipe was like, I think, like four pages. And I was getting graded on that. So the whole time you're doing journals, let's say you had a question that the, the clinician, I'm sorry, the professor didn't think was right. They're going to give you back that journal and tell you that they need to grade it. They need to regrade it. And you like, you have to make me redo this journal over one question. And they like, yeah, mm-hmm. And I want it back on Wednesday when you come back next week. And you like, I already have your journal, a quiz, a test, and a project to do. I can't, you can't just like let this one question slide. And they like, no, I want to know your answer. And they will continue to give you back journal two. You already on journal five, six by now. You halfway through the semester and they still on this one question. And it gets to a point where they will sit you down. And they it might not be like this for you, but... They will sit you down and be like, I just wanted you to say this. And they might give you the answer, but they still want you to go in your computer and type it all out and give them back the journal so they could grade it. So you could, they could put the grade in. But it's like, they're doing that to make sure you're thinking. And they want that to be embedded in your brain. So anytime you are walking around in private practice and you have that same situation come up, you know exactly how to handle it. You know exactly how to answer it. And you know your stuff, you know? And I feel like my school was such a good school. I went to the University of New Haven because they were strict on us. But towards the end, like, you could tell that they, they kind of let go of us because they're like, okay, we, we think we know, we, we think that you know what you're doing. I would just say like hygiene school taught me so much patience okay like kylie and stormy 
patience, patience. Like, I learned so much patience in that damn school. Like, you are learning a new skill. You're learning something you've never done before. As much as you think watching someone on YouTube do it, watching someone in your dental office do it, or even being an assistant and watching someone do it, it's nothing like when you do it yourself. It's not. And doing it and applying the information you learn together is different. It's just so different. Um, so I feel like hygiene school is a place where you you literally are in clinic taking all these exams, all these tests. Um, just remember, you still have your lecture classes. So you still have like pharmacology, periodontology. You still have like all of these classes you're taking while you're in clinic. And all of those classes have exams. And the way dental hygiene is set up, it's like they give you an exam every like three weeks but you have quizzes from each science class like every two to three days and then you still have comps in clinic and then sometimes in clinic you have projects to do so it's like yo how am i gonna get all of this done like you're literally so overwhelmed like you're so overwhelmed and the only thing you can do is just cry. Like, cry, pray, have a calendar, try to map out your time. And it's like, you feel like you don't have enough time to do it. It's just like, it was hell, honestly. Y'all asking me, how was it? It was hell. I hated that shit. Like, I hated it. I did not start liking it until maybe my last semester. And even then, I was like, I'm over this shit. Like... I don't even want to be here no more. Like, I was about to fail out because I just gave up. Like, literally, I gave up. I stopped studying. I stopped participating. Like, I was so over it. Like, I started August 2014, and I graduated May 2016. Like, 2015, the beginning of 2016 was the worst, like top five worst years of my life like between trying to balance going back home hanging out with my friends which is hardly ever something you could really do um trying to stay from being so damn broke because being a college student you broke um because you're not working dental hygiene is not a program you can work they tell you that from jump like this is not a program you can work in like you are slaving like you're literally slaving for the dental hygiene bag. You are not slaving for any other bag. So, yeah. So, you're spending your whole school year, like, like basically testing with that one patient. that Those five patients that whole semester. Or is it a year? Is it a year? No, it's a semester. So you have those five patients, right? Those five patients come back to see you like five or six times. Their procedures go step by step. So the first patient, um, the first patient appointment is just medical history. Gathering of medical history. And most of the time, because these patients are only paying like $20 to come and get their cleaning done and everything, because we're students, they're practicing, they're getting practice on. They have so many illnesses. They can't really afford dental care. Like, it's a lot going on. So you have to literally sit there. You have to know every single medication, the dosage. You have to know the interactions with the medications, with their body and dental care. Um, even if it's not going to interact with dental care, your clinic professor might have a comp for you. Like, what are the interactions of a barbiturate? You have to know that. You have to know medications. You have to know, um, you have to know illnesses. You have to know diseases. You have to know how to handle patient care because you're scared. You're like, I don't want to go in this person's mouth and hurt them. 
what if I do this? What if I do that? You're having all this anxiety and it's like, they're standing there with you the whole time, but you ultimately have to have control of the appointment. So yeah, so the first appointment is medical history. Then the second appointment, all you're doing is looking around their mouth and that's called assessment. So you're looking around their mouth, you're seeing what they have, you're writing it down, you're taking pictures, right? And then after that, you are, are identifying what was in their mouth. And then after that is perio charting. <sighs> perio charting was like top five worst things I think I've ever done in my life. Like I, I, yeah, hard, perio charting was so hard for me. I breeze through it now because I do it the way I want to do it. But perio charting is so like it's so in depth and deep in school. If for no, it's like for no reason, like no reason at all. So okay, if you don't know, perio charting is when you go to the dentist and they're measuring your gums from one to ten millimeters. Okay, so we got this small, 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 small ruler like looking tool thing, and it's called a probe. And you use that and you measure in between the person's gum. And you're basically like, we don't call it that professionally, but you're basically poking their gums. And you trying to see how far down that measurement probe goes down and see where the markings are. If the markings are between one to three, that's healthy. Uh, four to five is like, mm, five means no good. Five, is, five into 10, means that they have periodontal disease we have to do a deeper cleaning like something else has to happen it's unhealthy right then you have to mark down bleeding and then on the chart you have all of these different things you have to mark down like if they have gum recession like if their gums are receded um if they're missing gum level if they're missing bone um gingival margin like it's all of these things and because in school you have three hours to be with that patient, they make us do the whole chart. In a private practice, we only have an hour. So you're only really focused on the probing and the recession and the bleeding. That's it. And if there's any mobility, meaning that like if the tooth is loose or if it moves, that's it. And you doing that real quickly, you hopefully have a hygiene assistant to help you probe. If not, you freehand in that bitch and you measuring yourself and you're going around. Um, but mainly the perio charting was hard because you are learning how to use your mirror the first semester and you're basically trying to do what's called indirect vision. So you're holding the mirror and you're not looking in the mirror. You're looking, you're not looking at the mirror. You're looking in the mirror. So you have to have the mirror facing towards the patient and then looking down into it. But you have to also keep your, your back straight. They, they teach you posture. They teach you what's called ergonomics. So you have your chair at 12 o'clock, like a clock. So it's like a clock, counterclockwise. And you have your chair, right? And they're teaching you ergonomics. So you have to learn how to move how to turn your head, how the patient turns their head, and it's called patient positioning and clinician positioning, okay? So if you're left-handed, you're on three o'clock. If you're right-handed, you're at 12 o'clock. If, if you're trying to get the patient to do something from the left side, then you have to be at a certain position. That is what you're learning the first. The first semester, that's what you're learning. The second semester, well, no. The first semester you're learning probing, you're learning accretions. Accretions is like how much plaque do they have on the teeth? Light, medium, light, moderate, or heavy. Um, how much calculus do they have on their teeth? Which is like hard plaque that you have to like remove. Um, light, moderate, heavy. How much bleeding? Light, moderate, heavy. Um, how much swelling of the gum? Light, moderate, heavy. Um, what do healthy gums look like? Describe healthy gums in a paragraph, in a sentence. Healthy gums is um, pink, stippled, healthy. Um, what does gingivitis look like? Bulbous, red, bleeding, inflamed. Because when you write a note, you have to describe what the gums look like, what the patient's health was like, 
what the patient's behavior was like. Like all of that has to be described in a note. So you're learning that in a note. So that's secretions, then note taking, and then you have something called SOAP. And SOAP is basically like, what subjectively have you learned? Okay, I learned that the patient is a hardworking construction worker. Objective, he grinds his teeth. Okay, um, and then what can you do about this? Night guard, what does he need to do? Gingivitis scaling and replaning, like whatever. So SOAP is you creating a treatment plan. So you're learning that and then you're getting tested on it while you're doing all of that. Mind you, we're still taking regular classes and we're still doing our lecture for dental concepts as well. So you have those four or five classes together that you're studying for, that you're still getting quizzed on. You still have to submit your journals. You still have to submit your comps, okay? So yes, you're in school for 18 months. It seems like, oh yeah, it's gonna be quick. I'm about to get my money, da 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 But it's a process. It's a process, there's a lot to learn. And it takes a lot of practice. And that's why they have you doing this in such a repetitious way. And that's all you're doing every single day, answering the same questions over and over and over. Um, you're learning something new over and over and over. And it's like, clinic was the hardest part for me in a way because I had to learn how to let go of my overthinking and my fear because they would come and ask me something so simple and I would stress out and be like, blank. Or the question would be so easy to answer and I'll be like, is this a trick question? Are you psyching me out? I'm gonna tell you the answer you wanna hear. And I end up saying the wrong answer because I'm overthinking, I'm stressed out, I'm having anxiety, I'm shaking, I'm sweating, okay? My deodorant was working, okay? So I feel like Hygiene school is manageable if you find friends within your cohort to work with. If you have no one in your cohort that you feel connected with, then you all are taking the same classes. Find friends, find a group that you can get with, you know? Um, and we also remember you have your freshmen, your sophomores, and your juniors. And then you have seniors who are coming back to the school to do their bachelors and stuff like that, who are already working out in the field. So. You have people you can go to to try to connect with, to try to talk to, um, try to get help that are supportive, you know? Like, I would just say my best advice is to just have support. Find support there. If you're an introvert, I don't know what to tell you, boo. You're gonna have to get out of that. Introverted people in this field end up being extroverted in that kind of way because you have to talk to these patients you have to talk to doctors you have to talk to their medical doctors you have to get medical clearance if they had a heart attack you're gonna have to speak to people so you gotta get used to talking to people period and you have to get used to being a leader because it's like what should you do and you like uh uh i don't know you can't not know you gotta know because one day, soon, in 18 months, when you're done with this program, you're gonna be leading your own program, your own like schedule. You're gonna have your own schedule. You're gonna have to know what to do.